Hi everyone, so uh, in this video we'll talk about a few things. Uh, so first off, the progress that I've made on the direct drive version uh, and also on the Bowden version uh, of the MSU. So the MSU being the material switching unit, uh, which is a multi-material upgrade that is compatible with almost any 3D printer. Uh, and that is based on the MME2 with actually quite a few modifications to improve both on performance and on price. Uh, so this can be built for 70 US dollars, uh, which is really in good price we can compare that to the palette 2 or the mme2 um, i will also be talking about the filament sensor uh, which i've made quite a bit of progress on uh, the time lapse setup that i've installed on this uh, printer which is interesting and uh, also really um, cheap for what it is and uh, finally we'll take a look at also the multi-material print so i finally received some flexible filaments. Uh, it's TPU, so it's not as, let's say, flexible as Ninja Flex or uh, those extremely flexible uh, filaments. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I couldn't print them on uh, my Bowden printer. Um, but it's, yeah, I'm starting to go into multi material printing with that upgrade compared as to before, where I was mostly doing multi color prints uh, with different colors of PLA. So let's see, this is the first. Um, multi-material print so uh it's made out of uh pla and tpu so that red tpu you see on the inside and it's actually a first prototype um for the filament sensor uh and it's yeah basically just a wheel with the inside groove uh to the filament diameter uh made out of tpu and this has the benefit that it's going to be a lot more grippier uh and it's gonna be m catch more onto the filament uh, which means that we'll have absolutely no problem turning that wheel and the filament sensor. Uh, for the filament sensor, I'm not going to use the magnetic encoder, uh, just for the reason of simplicity. Uh, Marlin already supports uh, those sensors, which are, uh, let's say, it's just a slot with an IR sensor, and you then have a wheel with multiple slots, and that means that the state of this sensor is going to be high, low, high, low, high, low when the wheel is turning. And you can know the speed, the flow rate, um, just based on the frequency of that um, high, low signal. Um, and you can also know whether filament is present just by pushing it by, let's say, one millimeter and seeing whether this uh, the state of um, the sensor changes or not. Um, and this is already supported inside of Marlin, so uh, that means that it's just way easier to implement for me. Uh, it's going to be cheaper, easier to install than the magnetic encoder, and um, yeah, it overall makes the design a lot simpler. So uh, I looked into it and realized that it was a better solution. So I'm going to be going for that um, in the future, and uh, with the primary testing that I've done, uh, it seems like a really good option. Um, so now on the direct drive setup side of things. So uh, the direct drive setups has come along quite a long way. Uh, all the software has been coded and is working properly. Uh, I just need to, let's say, do a little bit of upgrade on the physical side of things, mainly with the adapter that, uh, let's say, adapts the direct drive extruder, which has no PTFE uh, coupler. Uh, to be able to be connected to a PCFE tube, which is then connected to the uh, material switching unit. Um, and this is the main thing that I have problem with, because as you can imagine, having an extra extruder in the way from the way to the MSU to the uh, actual nozzle, uh, means that this is one extra spot where a failure can happen. And it's just a fair bit of added complexity, which I need to deal with um, in order to have some reliable printing. So I've had, let's say one or two successful filament changes, but not enough reliability to print, let's say, a, a full print where you have 600 tool changes um, and filament changes uh, during the print. And uh, this is also one of the test setups where I believe the filament sensor will be extremely useful uh, because any load failure can be detected by the uh, filament sensor. Uh, now, I already talked about uh, the um, time-lapse setup so you probably saw one of the videos about the time lapses I'm going to show uh, the ones I did um, between then and right now and um, it basically gives you the same results as uh, Octolabs uh, on uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, for way less so this uh, is a cheap like remote phone shutter uh, so it emulates a Bluetooth keyboard uh, and just when you press on it, it emulates a volume click. And uh, if you have your camera app open and you press a volume button, 
uh, it will actually take a picture and this is what this is based on. So basically you put your phone here, um, you connect it to that little Bluetooth camera shutter and when the bed moves and hits that camera shutter, it takes a picture. Um, so this is what has been shown by um, Chep, I think. And uh, I was already working on that before that. And the only thing I didn't like about the way it was implemented in his video is that uh, this is still battery powered. So what I did is I basically opened it, connected it to the main board, um, connected the switch to one of my end stops. And now it's uh, fully powered by the board and the power supply. And I don't have to worry about replacing the little battery that's inside of there. Um, so I'm going to show you the video of that uh, Moai right now. And as you can see, the results it gives are not perfect yet. I have a few things to improve, but it's already really, really good. Uh, so I think that's it. I haven't posted a video in a while and that's because I have a huge amount of work uni wise. Um, but I'm still definitely making progress on this. Uh, I just don't have the time to post videos about it. So if you want to follow this project closely, uh, I highly recommend you join the Discord, which I will have linked down below, uh, because this is a place where I post uh, frequent updates. And if you want to build this for yourself uh, and you're already experienced, you can do it right now. So I will post an easy to follow video tutorial. Once this will have reached, let's say, a, a high in a, like state of development. But right now it's more of a beta version. So if you want to build it, um, honestly, join the Discord server and see on the GitHub, there's a build guide but I wouldn't recommend it for anyone that's not experienced uh, because it's definitely going to be quite the headache and require a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, other than that, I hope you all have a nice day and uh, see you guys next time.